ไปดูคุณThe coroner's officer has to wait her turn while the police take statements for their own inquiries. Well, the mum was the mum was standing outside there while she went to get milk, and uh, she was crossing the road. There's no cars coming, and cars come out of nowhere, and car hit the girl, caught the girl all the way down here. Car swerved, take the body off the bonnet, and the girl ended by the bus stop, and the drove, driver drove off, and the mother started screaming, and that, and that's when my brother come running out, and they phone the police, and that. I've had a brief word with the uncle. Yeah. I know Mum actually saw, but I'm not going to speak to her. I'm going to take no. a little statement of Dad. Yeah. Because he identified the body in the hospital, so I'll do that. And I'll let you have a copy of that. Yeah, please. And actually, like, no, you better have the original. I'll keep the copy. That's in there. Right. Okay. And we we've arranged, or we're going to arrange to get a statement of Mum tonight. Okay. Which they've agreed to. Right. Uh, we've just got to sort out an interpreter. Okay. Uh, right. That's it then. I think Sergeant Ford's going to come and I spoke to him this morning. He's going to come and do the opening. I'm going to open it on Wednesday. So I know the family wants to get the body back to the as soon yeah. as possible. That's what we've... Uh, Thursday, I think they're looking. So that's, right, that's yeah. what we're going to try and get things done. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Stevens, the coroner's officer. Mr. Is it alright, Yeah, thank you. In accordance with Muslim tradition, the extended family has arrived to stay with the bereaved. The men sit in the front room, the women in the back. They'll remain here until the funeral. A similar gathering is taking place in the family village in Pakistan. I only need to keep it quite brief because I know the police have already explained everything that's happening. So all I really want to do is explain um, how the coroner is involved and what we do now. Um, I've told you that there will have to be an examination so we can find the cause of death. That's going to be done tomorrow. Um, I'm actually going to go to the hospital this afternoon to see your daughter. And then um, I'll have the cause of death tomorrow and the inquest will open at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Okay? I'm just going to write this down. Can I have your date of birth? Yeah. 10 to February. Yeah. 54. And you were born in? Born in Pakistan, yeah. And can I have your occupation? Uh, I'm an assembler. I work in a factory, yeah. Yeah. And you, what's your wife's name? Uh, <coughs> my wife's name is Shama. Born in Pakistan? Pakistan, yeah. 
And does she work? Or is she no, has she, she has, has one. one. I will identify the body of my daughter to Mrs. Stevens, the coroner's officer at Newton Street on Wednesday the 1st of April 1998. My daughter's name is Tabsum Shamoon. She was born on the 27th of May 1988 in Birmingham. Tabsum attended Lee Road Junior School. She was a very fit and healthy child and was very active. She had no illnesses. Her hearing and eyesight was perfect. She died in a road traffic accident on Friday the 27th of March, outside our home address. Right, if I could ask you if you just sign for me just there, and then at the bottom there. Mm. Okay, is there anything you want to ask me so far about what I've said this morning? Have you... Yeah, these, uh, we were trying to arrange uh, her body yes. to go to Pakistan. Right. Uh, I've arranged it, I mean, I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, because there's a flight going tomorrow. Right. So yeah. why couldn't we have it uh, uh, tomorrow? You know, right. I mean, yeah. instead of Thursday, because the, all my family back home, my parents are very old, yes. they're now very young. Yeah. So we imagine, I mean, up here you got 50 people. Of course, right? I understand. But back yeah. home, you got 500. Yeah. So imagine uh, the, 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 the stress they are in. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't, I know we can't uh, arrange things for tomorrow. The reason, if it, perhaps if I explain why, um, because um, this is a very serious offence yeah. that, that has taken your yeah. daughter's life. Yeah. And because of that, um, we want to make sure <coughs> everything is done correctly. Um, you see, if we release your daughter's body too soon, before proper examinations are done, um, certain evidence can be lost. Um, because no doubt the uh, culprit will be taken to the Crown Court. So we have to make sure that we get all the evidence now, because obviously it's too late if we, if we miss something later. So that's why it will take just a little bit longer. Um, we've asked for a specialist in to come and do the examination tomorrow. And as I say, the body will be released for Wednesday. And I believe there's a flight on Thursday, isn't there? The body is still at the hospital. It will now be transferred to the central mortuary for a post-mortem examination. Is that the girl? That's the name I've got is Tabasum Shamoon. Yes, we know as Tabasum Shamoon. Right. Uh, she was identified to us uh, by Nurse Ashby okay. in the Maitland ward of the Hartland's Hospital right. on Friday evening. Machine. That's great. Thanks, sir. I'll just get um, Dean to come in. Dean. Dean, the police officer's just uh, done the identity. If you can just have a look at the. Um, the arm tag. So, I mean, you think, oh, you can get the arm tag out, it's alright. Okay. Tabasum Shem. Shem. Shemeen. 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 Yeah. What I'll do is so the tag will stay on her so I can mm -hmm. confirm the identity to, um, the pathologist. Okay. That's all. That's lovely. Okay. Yeah, we're up to move, yeah? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. We have a Every time a body is moved, the identification is passed on. Hi, Dr. Sullivan. Can I just identify this girl to you? It's Ta Tabasum Shamoon. Um, Tabasum Shamoon. She was identified to me by the police officer at the hospital. I just want to, if I fall and identify it to you at quarter to ten. Okay, lovely, thanks. After the post-mortem, Tabasum's father is asked to make the final identification for the inquest. How are you? Hello. 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 I'm just 
just going to arrange for you to go into the front into the chapel and you're going to see your daughter there. Um, you're clear with everything you've got to do this morning? The court officer will come and have a chat with you in a second. Yeah. All your family can go in together. Yeah. Um, and when you're in there, he'll just go through the details uh, of your daughter. He'll ask you whether you've identified her to me. And then the police officer will give some evidence. He'll sort of give you an idea of what's happening with police inquiries so far. And then that's it. It'll only be about five minutes. OK? okay. So I'm just going to check the chapel is ready. the family then will all be able to sit with her in the same room, okay? But this is just really for identification, so you can tell me that it's your daughter. Yeah. Thank you. Another Asian family has come to the coroner's office. Hello. Uh, you're the family of uh, Jamila Bibi? Yes, B. Jamila B. Yes. Um, I'm from the coroner's office, as you know. Um, I've got some bad news for you. The coroner has gone out on an appointment. He left at 11 o'clock this, mm. this morning, so he's not available to sign the removal out of England order that that you've requested from the registry office. Um, while we're waiting, I thought... The Asian communities have funeral committees who help organize repatriation. These men are waiting for a signature to allow them to fly a body home. No corpse can be taken out of the country without the coroner's written permission. We have to go through this rigmarole, which uh, for a lot of time, it does um, distress us because if somebody dies, say for argument's sake, on a Friday uh, and they've been an inpatient at the hospital and there's no problems with uh, finding the cause of the death, i.e. there's no post-mortem to be held and everything, uh, because the person dies on a Friday and with a weekend coming, uh, we can't obtain a signature on the form to take the body out of the country. And then, you know, we have to wait three, four days. I appreciate in other customs that, you know, where they take a week or two weeks before the funeral. But in the Muslim culture, uh, it's a fact that, you know, as soon as a person dies, then they try and bury him as soon as possible. For some time, the Muslim community has been trying to negotiate with the coroner over the release of bodies. Thank you very much indeed, Haroon Saad. Finally, and by no means lastly, I'd like to present to you Dr. Richard Whittington, Her Majesty's Coroner for Birmingham and Folio. Today, he's been invited to address a specially convened meeting with Pakistani community leaders. Lord Mayor, Chairman, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I first of all thank you very much for this invitation to speak to you, and I much welcome this opportunity of addressing representatives of the Muslim community. But what I have to say, I have to uh, believe, is probably rather controversial. All persons, whatever race or religion, must be treated equally. Now, I'm unable to prioritize one group to the detriment of others. I hope you realize, to the best of our ability, we do try and be helpful. But I cannot create, necessarily, a fast track for Muslims. The coroner has his priorities, too. That is to make sure that an appropriate and thorough inquiry takes place. 
not necessary, but it's done as quickly as possible. What would I would say to you is, if you cannot move, and I would say something very controversial for your benefit, if you can't move and can, cannot comprehend the particular needs of this community, then I would suggest you resign today. <laughs> well, uh, quite, quite clearly, and I think I would absolutely agree, I haven't moved. I don't think I have moved an inch. I think it's probably quite right. And you're not prepared to, from what we hear. That's quite true. I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree at all. Well, you shouldn't be in the post, then. You should not be in the post serving the multi-faith, multi-racial, multi-cultural city of Birmingham. You should not be in that post. Well, I think that was putting it strongly, but I think in many ways, if I was in his shoes and I felt as he did, I might have said exactly the same. I'm fully conscious of their disappointment and what they want to have. At the present moment, we can't provide it. The coroner has just rang into the office to say that he's been delayed. So don't come at quarter past one. Can you come at two o'clock? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Hopefully it should be sorted then. Okay. I'm sorry about that. It's better than you coming back at quarter to, two, quarter to one and being disappointed. I'm okay. sorry. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you should still have enough time to be able to collect um, Mrs. B from the Queen Elizabeth. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right then, Begin. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. right, bye. Yeah. She died yesterday. She and passed away last night. Yeah. That's why we tried to move very, very quickly this morning. We've been to the hospital from 9 o'clock this morning. We, they were wonderful, they just gave us a certificate. We went to the registry office, we registered the death. We tried to, uh, we asked them to fax the details here. But apparently, uh, we missed the coroner by 10 minutes. Uh, when the tax arrived, he had already left for a meeting. And um, the only thing we would like to see is any sort of deputization here for the coroner who can actually take over when he's not there or when he's in court and give us that sort of decision so we can get on with the funeral arrangements and whatever else we have to do. of England on your desk. I promised it for the, to the yeah, family earlier. That's, right. it's, that's it. Uh, I've had a quick uh, chat with the family. Uh, she's been in hospital for at least five weeks uh, and they're quite happy with the care yes, that she's yes, had. Yes. Well, she's clearly got uh, natural disease, hasn't it? So there won't be any problem there. No, oh, they're right. waiting so they can give the form to the undertaker. Okay. Anything else yet, or are you snowed under? Uh, I'm snowed under now, I've been talking to you <laughs> And also, I just discovered that I must have brought chewing gum off my foot and it's on the carpet there. I was oh, just well. about to remove the chewing gum when you came in. Caught in the act again. So yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Thank you. They'll be able to go to the hospital and collect um, Jamira. Thank you very much for that. All right then. Yes, thank you very much. Okay then. Bye. Okay then. I hope everything gets okay. The family of Nasima Bigo have come to identify her body. Nasima, only 21 years old, has died suddenly less than two days after contracting a mystery illness. In the absence of any explanation, the case has been referred to the coroner. A post-mortem will have to be carried out and an inquest held. Delay is inevitable. The coroner's officer is Alf Taylor. I'm just going to open the door and she's behind a glass screen, just lying there.
Do you want to come and sit down for a minute? Come and sit down for a minute. Down and come back. That's your sister, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Now you can remove yourself for a minute and then we go back down. Your mother okay? the 21 year old girl isn't it? That's right, yes sir. Who's found dead at home I believe. Actually been seen by the doctor the day before. Right? Yes, yeah. Um, the family had rung the surgery afterwards but uh, she'd been vomiting and had diarrhoea over a period of time and uh, I think there's some way about dehydration. She said like um, her head she couldn't sit up or anything like that, so we called the doctor, you know, the emergency doctor. The doctor rang back and said it was early days yet, that they couldn't come out and see her, so she should continue taking paracetamol and drink plenty of fluid. She's married girl. Married girl, yes. yes. Lives yes. with a family, but she's married. The coroner wonders if Nasima may have been given insufficient fluid following her vomiting and died from dehydration. There's no history of any sort of, uh, to give us any mm. idea. She's not mm. been abroad, or uh, mm. and there's mm. no one else in the family got any, yeah, any yeah. associated sickness. And my mom noticed her going pale, so uh, like they call for the ambulance, and like when they came, they like tried to resuscitate her. Well, I think they failed, like so they took her to the hospital, and we think. She might have died like when she arrived at the hospital or on the way to the hospital. Okay, well, I've seen all I want to see, actually. Thanks very much. Okay. But there doesn't appear to be uh, obvious signs of dehydration, dehydration, which is what I was really interested right. in. Yeah. But post mortems tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, right on. Go on. Well, I've spoken to the brother. I mean, there is very little. He can tell us it's just this sudden onset in mm. two days or mm. so, and then. Uh, there's, there's no, no previous history of no. being unwell. No, she got no no sort of problems whatsoever. And, um, she hasn't been taking any medication of any sort. Has no, she? no. The GP has has not seen her for some time, apart from this. I wonder whether she might have been taking no. some, you know, uh, you know, yeah. herbal medicine no, or something. Nothing. Like that, or there is nothing. Some traditional. Because some people mm -hmm. go to uh, traditional. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Medicines or whatever. Huh? There is, there's no form of any illness or whatever, in the, in, certainly in the, in the past few months or whatever. She's got yeah. nothing which if they can help us with. If it you could, though, just find out whether there's any possibility of over the counter medication yes, or, okay. let's say, uh, an, an orthodox, you know, unofficial yes. sort of okay. medicines, you know, like traditional medicines. Hmm. Good. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We will have the result as soon as the examination is being done this morning and the officer will ring you and tell you what, what the pathologist found. The Seema's family is anxious for news so that the body can be released as soon as possible. He will ring you probably before that as soon as he has the, the cause of death so don't worry we will ring you that's, that's what we normally do as soon as we know what the person died from we will ring you. All right okay bye bye. Just show you what, what's happening and where where that's where the coroner will sit. All the family can sit along there. Yeah. Okay, and the coroner will have you sitting down in that box there just to give those brief details he gave me yesterday uh -huh. about Nasima. And then he'll sign all the papers and he can come out. Okay. There's nothing the following day the inquest opens. The expectation is that once the hearing is over, the body will be released for repatriation to Bangladesh. So it'll, it'll all be over in here in a couple of minutes. Right. Okay. okay. That's fine. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
the blonde girl will come out to see you in a minute. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Taylor. Sure. Uh, we're opening this uh, Asian lady, you know, who died following the sickness. Yeah, yeah. Bagan, yeah. that's right, the sickness and diarrhea one. I've only just realised that the family wants to take the body abroad. That's right. No, yes. we haven't got a cause of death. No, Dr. Louis Harvey's taken feces, micro, microbiology, she's taken blood and urine, and she's also taken the histology, but we, we, we don't know where we're going with the cause of death at the moment. Well, I mean, it's a remote possibility, but we'll have to think of the possibility of, uh, of poisoning, you know, sir. Yes, I know. And uh, if once the body's gone out of this country, we're never going to have another chance to look at the body again. No. Uh, now, this is going to be quite a blow for the family, but I think on this occasion, I'm going to have to think of being, uh, taking my coronal powers seriously and actually uh, ordering the body is retained here. I'll have a word with I mean, it seems to me, actually, fact, there are two possibilities. Either they can agree to a burial here in Birmingham, right? Uh, which, of course, we could always have an exclamation if the yes. body is to be looked at again. Or alternatively, we could keep the body here in the deep freeze, and then sure. once they've, we've had the cause of death established, and we're quite happy, it's nothing suspicious, then they could take the body back to, I think, is it Bangladesh? It is Bangladesh. Bangladesh, that's right, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, I think perhaps before I go in and hear the evidence of identification, could you have a word with the family to, to prepare them for this? I would. I'll speak yes, to them. That's great. It's great yes. uses, but it's just possible that tissue may have to be taken from the body again, maybe hair or uh, skin or something like that to be looked at again. Okay. Yes, be quite sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks for Thank you very much. much. I'll do that. The coroner, like, um, he sort of said that the body will be released on the Thursday but we'd have to go in and like um, identify the body and it'll be released then but when we went there on the Thursday morning like out of nowhere out of blue they just said um, the coroner's not happy so they won't be releasing the body to like we wanted to send it back to Bangladesh to be buried there so um, they said if it was in Birmingham, they'd release it, like, sort of straight away, but not sending it abroad. I've had the relatives back, uh, and they're asking whether you would consent, if they had a burial, to sign a burial form, a burial in this country. Well, that was one of the yes, options I that I gave it to them, and uh, I think, think it would be unreasonable for you not to, uh, you know, okay. do they know that the brain has been removed? I have told them. You have told them? Yes, I think I it's important that yes. they should realise that uh, there are some organs mm. that have been taken, you know, for further yes. analysis. Yes, so I've told them that. I've put them in the picture, I've, I've told them the time mm. scale, mm. and uh, I, ha I think they've had a family conference. Well, they're, they're, Quite a, they're a most a reasonable right? family. And mm. Remember, I yes, suggested we talked to them before, and mm. they. Uh, and they came to that conclusion, which was to, to keep the body here, but yes. uh, I'd be quite happy to, to do that, then, sure. Okay, then, sure, mm -hmm. I can let them know that. Yes, yeah, it'd be a very nice, because yeah. otherwise they, they want to get on with the funeral. Yes, otherwise it's going to be a Muslim family, too, mm. because this is uh, kind of very pressing for yes. the Muslims. Yes, it is, yeah. Well, we had a lot of pressure from, like, relatives, the local community, because um, they made us feel really awful as well because instead of like showing sympathy they were saying we weren't doing anything to release the body it's just like our community they don't understand like what the coroner's power what what powers the coroners have like they were suggesting why don't you go to the MP or get a solicitor so that you can release the body straight away for what it is that they didn't really think about what the coroners were saying or what they have what they could do they weren't thinking about that so yeah like you know we got all sorts of jabbing going on and everything like saying things about their family as well The car which killed Tapasum Shamun is brought to the police workshop for tests.
I've got Stocko coming up to the mortuary this afternoon yes. um, because somebody has mentioned that there was some um, human hair found somewhere on the car. Yes. So what they're going to do, I know Stocko took it from the car yesterday. Do you know where? Yeah, they took some samples from uh, the glass fragmentation in this area here. Yeah. Um, as you say, what well, pieces of hair were found within yeah. the... Uh, Glass. Uh, right. well, what I'll do is I'll get um, Sako to, to take it off the girl this afternoon and then if they match up then there's no doubt that this is the car. No, no that's fine, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Smash him. Okay, yeah, thank thanks you. for your help. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. She ran into the carriageway, it appears, from uh, witness details. Mm. And then a car was coming on the outer city carriageway, mm. uh, above the speed limit, and uh, collided with a child. Mm. Now, you're saying that the uh, car was going in excess of the speed limit. Have you done uh, reconstruction? Reconstruction was done at the scene. Mm. Um, the car failed to stop initially. It made well, it's up from a failure the to stop, doesn't it, and make it reckless? Yeah, but the driver handed himself in and from uh, details mm. of the interview, mm. Uh, mm. we can say he was mm. going mm. up the speed limit, but still to be confirmed by the recon evidence. Have you got witnesses? We have got uh, two witnesses at the moment. Good witnesses, are uh, there? There's one good witness. Uh, the mother also witnessed. Yes. Uh, well, as she's going to get prejudiced. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. maybe prejudiced, just put it that way. There's one yeah. good independent witness at the moment mm. who was travelling in the opposite direction. Yes. What, what, what do you think the speed was? It, well, um, well, I mean, without, without having done, the recon evidence, I know you haven't actually had the reconstruction. I haven't had the recon calculations done at this but, stage. But from the length of the skid marks and things like that, it's probably 50 miles an hour plus. Oh, that's uh, uh, well. I mean, if we're uh, talking about that order, it's a 30 miles an hour speed. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if, uh, it's a gross excess of speed. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. And in yeah. fact, it appears the child was carried for some 45 meters from the oh, point of impact. Gosh, yeah. so actually carried, not thrown. Uh, a bit of each, I think. A bit of each. Yeah. I can say it very often, isn't it? Oh, well, I mean, we're talking about a uh, very grave uh, matter now, aren't we? Yes, yes, we are. Yes, that's right. Right, well, look, I think it'll just be a, a formal matter uh, this morning, hearing brief evidence from yourself and the Lord uh, pending the, the outcome. Mohammed Shaman, please. Mohammed, if you'd like to come in. Your family can come up this evening with you. Five days after the accident, the inquest on Tapasim is opened. The coroner will now release the body. Oh, um, the child we just opened. Oh, yes, sir. I've been uh, uh, hearing from the father. There's some confusion, actually, about the date of birth. Oh. And um, it wasn't her birthday when she was killed. She's actually, she was only nine, and it should have been May and not March. Funny enough, they actually told me May first, and then they actually phoned me. Yeah. And said, oh no, it was the 27th of March. Yeah. And I said, oh, was it her birthday? Yeah. Obviously, I was talking to an uncle, so... Right. Well, the other thing is, there's a slight difference in the spelling of the name, but the step I've checked on is, is, is tab, tab something, not tab something. But I've altered that everywhere. Right. Now, the, uh, but could you, what I'm going to suggest is, could you at some stage, and uh, I told the father to get to see the birth certificate, copy of the birth certificate, just to get it right. All right? That, you can see actually there, so that's the statement I've talked. Is it it actually changed three times. Well, I, I mean, I think it's very difficult for these Muslim oh, families trying right. to spell it in English, you know, and I have yeah. every sympathy. I mean, the varieties on the spelling of Mohammed are infinite, aren't they, exactly. really? Uh, they each have their own interpretation. So, anyway, I thought the, the main thing is if you could check on yeah. the uh, date of birth, I think you'd be quite certain to have a copy of the birth date. Okay. <laughs> Margaret, can you do me a burial on this one? We, uh, they wanted a removal initially, but the coroner wouldn't let it out of the country. Yeah, so he's, he's authorised a burial. If you can do that, get it into him, get it signed, and I can speak to the relatives. All right, yeah, I'll do that. Thanks very much.
Okay then, so I'm quite I'll happy. post it off then. Uh, we, we charging or you're not charging? Yes, we are charging, I'm sorry. Good, well that's we're something. We're supposed to, we, aren't we? Well that's right, we've got okay, to raise then. some money. Yes, okay. okay. This is a, uh, oh, this is the one that uh, we've just been talking about, isn't it? Uh, right. The cause of death of 21-year-old Nasima is still unknown. More laboratory tests are needed. But the body can now be released for burial, albeit only in this country. I made a note of that, we listed the burial order. Okay, thanks very much. I've done a bit more on it today, and the family are willing for the um, for it to be a burial here. So the coroner's releasing the body, and they'll probably be here tomorrow. I was just thinking that as, as she's an Asian, they'll want to take her away and wash her. It might be as well to take her out of the freezer tonight. There's no need for you to pick up the paperwork because they need that when they come here to pick her up. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, looking uh, Aunt Ambler's doing the funeral. Uh, no. It's Saddam Hussein Mosque. Sorry? It's Mosque, you know, and the teenagers are Saddam Hussein Mosque. Right, I'll get Al to come and have a word then because the undertakers believe they're involved. Okay. Oh. So we'll have to get it sorted out. Take a seat. Okay. Oh. Bye-bye. Alf, you're now to be gone. Mm -hmm. I've got a guy from the mosque outside now and he reckons he wants the paperwork for the for the body. Well, is he a, is he, are they the ones who've arranged to collect it? Well, he seems to be, but Ambler's under the impression they are, because I thought he was a member of the family first, so Ambler's going to come anyway. When are Ambler's coming? Well, we're going to come today. Well, the oh, well, funeral's today. Right. Well, I don't know. I thought you might know who's handling it. Well, I think there is somebody from the mosque who's handling it. My understanding was that I spoke to somebody from the mosque right. yesterday. Right. Um, and they were going to handle it. But I didn't know Amblers were involved in it at all, Colin. Well, he reckons they're not, but I've just phoned Amblers and they says, oh, yeah, we're, we're looking after that funeral. But I think they are. I'll give them a ring then. Um, I've just spoke to Amblers and I Have thought you? this was a family member out here until I went out and he said, well, no, I'm from the mosque. Right, this is the paper that you need. Now you'll need this to present to the mortuary to remove her. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, okay yeah. then? Yeah. The mortuary is just put the yeah. driveway at the side. Okay, oh. if you give them that, yeah. they'll really... Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. The funeral of nine-year-old Tapasam Shamu is set to follow afternoon prayers. The body will then be flown to Pakistan. <laughs> the coffin is placed in a small room opening onto the mosque. आप सभी अज़राज जितने भी अपनी अपने पर्दी नमाज़ अदा करने के बाद ये बच्ची की नमाज़ में आप अपने के लिए आप सभी नमाज़ करे हुए इस बच्ची का एक्सीडेंट हुआ है एक्सीडेंट की सूरत में इस बच्ची का इंतजार है और भी बेशुमार ऐसे वाकयात पेश आते हैं लेकिन उसके बावजूद हमारे लोगों के अंदर इब्रत नहीं आती बेशुमार वाकयात अपनी आंखों से देखने के बावजूद मौतें देखने के बावजूद बड़े खतरनाक और दर्दनाक किस्म के हैपन देखने के बावजूद फिर हमारे फिर भी हमारे लोगों के दिलों के अंदर डर भी नहीं आती है और ना ही खुदा से डर का दिल का मुझसे भी नहीं ये कितने वाकयात ऐसे आपके सामने तो इस बच्ची का वाक्य आपके सामने है इंसान को अच्छे रास्ते पर चलने के चौकी बच्ची के वो रास्ता की तरफ से ये आपके लिए एक ऐलान है तीन सौ बाईस नंबर वाटफिद रोड वहाँ जो बाहर के मेहमान शिव लाए हैं उनके खाने का इंतजाम तीन सौ बाईस नंबर पर किया गया है बाहर से मेहमान आने वाले वहाँ खाना खा के जाए अल्लाह रबालमीन आप सब अल्लाह की हाजिरी को कबूल फरमाए अल्लाह अकबर
Allahu Akbar. Only the men attend the funeral. Tabasum's mother and the other women are waiting in the hall across the road. After the service, the coffin is carried to them. Laboratory tests have finally yielded a result in the case of Nasima Begum. Alf Taylor receives the verdict from pathologist Dr. Nija Aluihari. I mean, it has been a difficult case, yeah. as you know. I mean, when I first did the PM, I um, really couldn't give a cause of hmm. death at that time. But I did find a swollen brain, um, and I suspected that the cause of death was going to lie in the brain, but I couldn't slice it in the fresh state, and that has really been... The, the source of the main delay because right. the brain is a very soft organ and if you slice it fresh you, it, just you, it just collapses so it had to be hardened in formaldehyde for several weeks but when I did slice the brain I mm. found a, a cyst um, quite small just less than two centimeter cyst in the ventricle in one of the ventricles of the brain one of the cavities of the brain and this had co impacted and caused obstruction of the flow of cerebrospinal fluid yeah. through the brain um, and this had led to sort of a raised pressure within the brain and had caused unfortunately caused her death that would account for the sickness that would account yes because vomiting. raised pressure can cause vomiting and it would account for a headache as well right um actually you might like to have a look at um, a slide of the cyst that uh, pink thing that's the size it, of it, it, it well, yes i mean in fact it shrunk down because in the processing of the material it shrinks down mm. so it was actually larger yeah. but it was filled with this gelatinous material which uh, um, stands up pink so i'm giving the cause of death as uh, raised intracranial pressure secondary to a colloid cyst of the third ventricle right Maybe the relatives will probably ask me i'm sure they will um whether the the doctor would have been able to sort of diagnose that in the time because this is this has come on in 24 this hours came on very it, rapidly it? yeah. it's one of those things uh, she would have complained of vomiting and headache and that is not the sort of thing you would in, it, think of mm. it's a very unusual cause of death um I've never I, I don't I mean I've never given it as a cause of death before no. it's well recognized yeah. but it's but it's, it's rare it's a, yeah. um and it's it's, and it can or sudden death unfortunately so it is purely this that's the cause of death now I also asked her because I think you probably want to know mm. uh, whether the doctor could have done something yeah, they uh, have done and she said no it, it is one of those things which have come on extremely suddenly very very rare and so she wouldn't expect anyone to diagnose that That's as the cause of the death. I mean, after a while, with tests in hospitals and scans and all the other sort of bits and pieces, they may have been able to detect it. But of course, it all happened too quickly, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It makes me feel worse, like, you know, it just happened so suddenly that nothing could have been done. And 
like it took uh, such a, a long while to find out. Because if that, I was just wondering that if it could have been like um, done any quicker than it taken this long, so that she could have been flown back home and buried there. PK at 7907 to Shri Pradaya. Tabasum Shamoon's last journey is by 747 to Pakistan. Her mother and two sisters go with her. For passengers, please extinguish all smoking materials before leaving the gate area and have your boarding cards ready, along with your passports, which should be open with the surname clearly visible. On behalf of Pakistan International Airlines, we would like to wish you all a very pleasant flight. In January, a man was convicted at Birmingham Crown Court of careless driving. He was fined £1,000 and banned for two years. The charge of failing to stop at the scene of an accident was dropped. If you'd like to talk to someone in confidence about the death of someone close to you, whatever the circumstances, you can ring Channel 4's free helpline on 0800 600 444. Eyes are open from now until 1am. That's 0800 600 444.